Today I have something very special for you. We are going to watch finals of FOC tournament, which is basically a cyclic league where the best players in Elden Ring compete with each other. In this particular case it's gonna be Bevan, who is probably one of the most, if not the most consistent player in the entire competitive scene of Elden Ring, versus Frosty, who might be easily called as the most creative tournament player. I also jumped on the voice chat with Frosty so we can hear his thoughts about the entire match. You may have noticed that as well, dude. It's not every day that you see the uh, off Kiba main hand <laughs> Reaper setup, right? So, and what was your build overall? It is a cane build, yeah? Like yes, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, it is indeed. And the, the idea of this overall, obviously, is Ooh. mainly. Yeah, it was a beautiful jumping R2 there. Um, the hard read on the CL1. And the shutdown on the running R1 there as well. Just trying to make it extraordinarily difficult for Bevan to actually find his way in, you know, and trying to stay one step ahead. And that was like the first trade there, but obviously the Kiba, exceptional for those backswings and the beautiful third R1 there. Range extension on the Reaper. Beautiful outspace there as well. And then this was where I just got Ooh, into his head, the dude. Roll and then the, cut. <laughs> All right, but... another round, the third one. So, um, yeah. So what you have actually on the main hand, it is it is a scythe, and but what type of it is like a bleed one? Like what? Is so it's ash? it's it's an occult reaper with um with chilling mist on it, right? Okay. We'll and this. the reason why I use the base um reaper the base scythe instead of the grave is because it has higher um, bleed buildup on arcane than the grave scythe does by about a margin of 10 to 11 10 or 11 somewhere around there which is pretty significant considering how much i'm going for the bleed pops here right um and obviously the base reaper is significantly longer than yeah the i wanted to well. mention it this definitely yeah. makes a difference yeah so oh, i'm rocking the handy tech yeah but and then, oh well wait it was a beautiful crouch strafe on him there like, i was kind of out of my mind at this point too i was just like man the fact that this setup is working and i'm actively being able to pop bleeds on Bevan too, which his roles are always typically very exceptional. Yeah, what know, is and... what is worth to mention? Playing against PSGS is so much harder in this environment just because mm -hmm. of the lack of endure, lack of the storm stomp. Oh, this... for sure, dude. So yeah, it's just uh, I think like two hundred. Uh, what about like thrusting sword? Uh, the offhand thrusting sword I think is banned, like the the clean rod too. Yeah. So clean rot is banned, but Rajers is allowed, and all of the three shortest ones under that. So the uh, yeah, the but ice... this this range is important. Yeah, I completely agree, dude. Yeah, and recently the nobles S stock and the normal S stock got unbanned two handed only, not in the offhand. But yeah, not not in this tournament. That's my my point is right. My yep. point is you have so much harder time playing against this type of setup like PSGS oh, yeah. in this tournament that then it would be an issue in the original game yeah just because oh completely of... agree dude yeah uh, you have so many some of the main tools you know that you have to make PSGS a little bit less oppressive in the fact that you're able to pressure them and get them on the back foot right like a lot of those things are very very much restricted like you mentioned yeah I was up 2-0 and then Bevan answered back here so I was like okay I do have to take a little bit of a different approach here you know so I, I pull out the uh what I like to call the snake biter setup, dude. With the, How um... much stronger it is, uh, like the poison is, <laughs> in comparison to the regular one? Because uh, these weapons have like a, something that is called strong poison. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. They have deadly poison deadly attached poison. to them, and yeah. Okay. So, so what deadly poison allows for is it's basically scarlet rot. But it lasts a third of the amount of time that um, base poison and scarlet rot lasts for, right? So it only lasts 30 seconds, but it does way more damage over that 30 seconds than the base poison does over 30 seconds of just the base poison, right? So um, one proc of deadly poison does around 530 damage, I do believe, over 30 seconds, which is very oppressive. And it's, it's, it's quite the good mind game, too, because... 
they see the poison bar ticking down so fast that they're not likely to go for the bolus on it, right? So you're actively getting that damage over and over again throughout the course of the fight, right? Depending on how long it ends up lasting for. And once again, you know, the buffered the buffered crouch pokes here, you know, we're we're very, very smart on the side of Bevan to do um just because I was not adapting to it, you know. And if I if I was um rolling in on a lot of these cases with the quick poke these these sets would have gone completely completely differently you know like because i just i just was not yeah brother insane dude and i go for the barbara r2 on the snake biter dude but does not land and bevan bevan is very very good at fighting the barbaric roar but right there i just run up and do a neutral r1 and he was not ready for that because i had not thrown out the neutral r1 at any point <laughs> throughout yeah. that fight, and it just caught him off guard. Yeah, but By overall, surprising your opponents in, in the Tarnis. Yeah. I, from yeah, my yeah. participation, yeah. overall, normally something that you would consider a bad play in more casual environment might be a good play in the competitive environment. Dude, yes! Yeah, just because of the mix up potential or just the yeah, fact that like your man. opponent does not expect some sort of the move, yeah. Yes, exactly. And that that's that's actually a really good point, man. And I'm, that's something that I say a lot is just the fact that, you know, like everybody says, oh, man, you know, monkey mashing out of hit stun, you know, mm -hmm. and it's typically like high end players that say that because it's not expected at the highest level to do something like that. Yep. So those options become like the most idiotic thing to do or perceived as but they really become the strongest thing that you can do against a competent player oh, oh it is the round it is the round. Yeah, this, this is the, is the round, round man. <laughs> yeah, the five in a row yeah. it's a fucking jackpot dude <laughs> <laughs> yo See, dude, and like you, you ought to, you, you fucking ought to think, dude. My fucking controller just disconnected there, but that was not the case. My brain just died, man. The quick pokes. <laughs> I, I just like, like I was so baffled that he was actually quick poking for once in his life, dude. <laughs> and you know, a little, little nugget of information as well, dude. So Bevan, um, after, or I believe, I believe he mentioned this in the post, uh, tournament interview, right? Where they both brought us on call for a little bit. He was like, when he was practicing for the tourney, like just the day oh, prior, insane camera, <laughs> yeah, amazing camera, dude. <laughs> um, you know, it's all a work in progress, but, uh, yeah, dude, no, like, um, he was mentioning when he was training with, uh, Siri or whatever, like, Siri was just mentioning, like, quick poke, Bevan, why are you not quick poking? And that's what made him start quick poking, because otherwise, like, without that, and he even admitted this, that he would not have been doing it as frequently as he was, effectively potentially even changing the the outcome of the tourney as a result you but know and this like, is exactly, props to siri for that this is exactly what we were talking about as a second ago about like these you know potentially scrub like moves yeah. that you wouldn't expect on the high level of competition but they yeah. turn out to be actually very 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 effective <laughs> exactly because you don't yes. expect them yeah <laughs> yo yo mix up the mix up man yeah, yeah. Yep. How many yeah. Yomi levels yeah, are that... we doing today? <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. uh... So what happened here? You won the first BO9, and since you came from the loser's bracket, now there is a reset, yeah? Yes, there is indeed. Yeah, I forced the reset of the bracket, and I would have to win yet another best of seven here to be able to take the tourney win home. But yeah, no, like, it just, I just did not adapt, man. Um, quick enough. That's really what it came down to at the end of the day, you know? And obviously, Bevan gets, I believe, 3-0 on me here before I actually adapt and change up my play. And that's one of the things that I really need to work on as a player because, you know, like like they say, dude, you know, that that's really what separates the great from the truly exceptional is being able to adapt to what your opponent's doing on the fly, you know, like even mid-match. And that's something that I've always struggled with, right? Very and unfortunately, yeah, right. 
But um, yeah, that's definitely something that I need to work on for sure across the board. And you see me actually roll the quick poke. The, the four ones. Poke there. Yes, yeah, insane, dude. And one thing I want oh. to point out there too is I would have been able to tank that crouching L1 if I had Bullgoats on there with the poison mist, but unfortunately, yeah, that's I did actually not. Was, uh, was quite surprising to me that it, you didn't yeah. poise through it. You know, like Poison Mist, if you actually hit with the actual attack itself, it does a decent amount of damage. At least enough to out-trade even a uh, yeah, Crouching it's based off your regular DSGS. air, so it's like no yeah, basically yeah. normal hit with the Hyper Armor and Guaranteed Poison. Exactly, dude, which is which is huge, you know, with the poison bonus. Um, uh -huh, but, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah, we saw a little bit of a uh, corner trap attempt there, but unfortunately, I did not take the time to set up my arcane character's inventory, oh. so it was not a very fast swap. I had to okay. fumble okay. around in my inventory. Yeah, that actually, um, I, I have noticed that you wasn't swapping very fast here, and I was actually curious if that's because of the inventory issues. Yeah, 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 that's, that's mainly it. Uh, honestly, like, not bank prepared with, with my setups for the tarnies it is literally name of my game like i <laughs> yeah. I, I i was prepared only for one eu tournament and and uh, essentially well th that was the one that that i won in the in the regular splits <laughs> no way no prep required dude let's go what was going through my head here at this point was like i was i was starting to recognize I was like, okay, I need, I need to start fucking rolling in, man. And I believe this is where you start seeing me do that a little bit more. And once again, man, if I would have, if I would have just been able to adapt a little bit faster here, that presumably would have been the, uh, the game changer. You know? Yeah, actually, like rolling in against PSGS after mm -hmm. the patch 1.10 is yes. way better than it, previously. It was just a mistake. You didn't want yeah. to do it. Oh, 100%. And, and right now, because of the of the fact that roll is always going to break, uh, sorry, like the yep. attack is always going to bre break the stance, then it's actually not always just a mistake. You can actually play aggressively like this. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And then as soon as well, I start unless, rolling unless... and he starts using Storm Assault, dude, <laughs> you'll notice that be become a recurring theme there, right? Um, I mean, this is obviously... one of the best setups for the PSGS currently, too. Oh, yeah, dude, 100%. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That was a beautiful crouch strafe there, again, yeah. on the side of Bevan. Just once again, I want to shout out his prowess to that, because that's something he's always been exceptional at. Oh, yeah, like, um, Bevan is one of the best PSGS players in the game. Oh. I tried for a cheeky reverse jump there, and you just see my character fall down, defeated. So I think I swapped to main hand CGS off Kiba here, but unfortunately, because my build was not optimized as well, uh -huh. um, classic. I I do fat roll <laughs> massively. I think again here after getting the jumping R two punish on the sacred blade. But, oh uh, hell yeah! yeah. And, there, and he he could have just killed me. And yeah, ended he. Right. Could, there, but but he's, he's, just, he, yeah. he's a homie, dude. So I, I respect the hell out of him for that. Billions of dollars on the line and still respecting <laughs> yeah. the homie. Holy shit. Yo, insane. Actually impressive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is where I land like the, yeah, the seven piece combo on him with the uh, the vortex of the key. Holy, here. okay. Dude, who needs to vortex with PSGS when you can vortex <laughs> yeah, with dude. freaking two handed Nagakiba? Yeah, and that, that's one of the things that's been super underrated as a setup. Even in the previous patches, Kiba has always been exceptional just because it, the backswings have been incredible. And just and the poise was seeing... invalidating it in the meta. Right, yeah. yes, indeed. But you still could poise chip and make it very, very good. And that yeah. like Kiba, like katanas in general, in general are something that I've never really played around with like at all in the Souls games in any title. And just because I was like, dude, I don't know, dude, they're just not my thing, man. And then lo and behold, I pick up Kiba in patch 1.8 and use it quite a bit in 1.9 as well, well into 1.10, especially oh, after totally the That's totally my thing, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, lo and behold, it becomes one of my best setups. It's, you know? it's one of my favorite movements in the game overall. Like yeah. the, the moveset is very fun. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once again, we see actually a roll in after there, and I managed yeah. to clip him with the jumping R one. Adapting. Which, Look at that. Yeah, yeah, dude. That was it. Was unfortunate that I couldn't use DGS off Kiba because that is a setup that I've been playing around with a lot recently, and it is incredibly oppressive. Very, very strong. Even, even the inverse of it too is very, very good. Um, and you see me try and make use of the. The spinning slash there to tank through the um the lingering hitbox on storm assault but unfortunately was not close enough um, but this is and a very good idea because you can actually do that yeah normally yeah. like with your poise mm -hmm. you cannot exactly and he misses his micro spacing there a little bit and i actually managed to get the bleed pop on him with Hell, the dagger there. yeah yeah, and I'm actually playing it very, very dagger heavy primarily, you know, and the, this setup is incredibly strong and was, it was probably the tippy top of meta in um, patch 1.9 even was CGS off dagger. And for some reason, people just are not using it in this update. And it's, it's, it's as strong as it's ever been. You know? Yeah, it's, it's because daggers are way harder to play right now because of the fact like this is the only weapon class in the game that uh got its poise damage essentially nerfed in comparison right. to everything else exactly right so, so yeah. you need like you need around like and that was that was beautiful there too and obviously that that's kind of what this this entire setup is predicated upon right there was i know that i can tank the uh crouching l1 from psgs and force trade it with a bloody dismounter very three piece true combo on the spinning slash, right? A very decent Which play will... from Bevan here that he was waiting for the running mm -hmm. attack to dodge the. Yeah, agreed. The yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And then I go for the follow up trade there, which probably wasn't a good decision, but. Uh -huh. The bees. And unfortunately, I just barely, <laughs> not the bees, dude, not just bees. barely miss it, dude. Yeah, and honestly, I should have been making use of roped fly pots a lot more because they would have actually, uh, there would have been a lot of, um, oh, oh, dude, the, the input drop, my, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I when I have seen it live, I fucking felt that. But yeah, no, like I was saying, I should have definitely been using a lot more roped fly pots as just an, a disengage and a get off me tool, you know, when he's trying to go for the vortex because it's very threatening. And like, you know, when you're on like 50 arcane, like I am. The fly pots have a lot of buildup, and they actually do a lot of fucking damage too. It's very, very impressive damage. It's all—it's nearly three hundred, I do believe. They got a little in. bit nerfed this patch because of the uh, very intended uh, mechanic that was aim punch. Yeah, like not, <laughs> yeah. not being that good yeah. because yeah, right. You still, yeah, and that's what I was... I'll go on, yeah. You, you, you still have aim punch on this, yeah? Like, I think. It's just like, it's not... Well, yeah, so aim punch was only fixed on hyper armor. Yeah, which, but... What, which, to be fair, it was the most prevalent, you know, case of it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but, but it's... On passive poise. Even on non-hyper armor tools, it still is better now, yeah? It's it's not as, as bad as it was in the past, I, I think. don't... I don't know about that. You don't know, actually? I don't know if that's actually true. That might be the case. I'm not I never had for once... On I'm only talking from the experience here, so it might be just absolutely wrong. But for once, I never had a situation anymore where my uh, HTS running attack would literally do 360 oh. <laughs> across the globe <laughs> after, like, you know, like, being hit by yeah, the pot or something. Yeah. Yeah, they may have lessened it across the board, potentially. That's yeah, I, something I think that I'll, I'll look is. into. I yeah, think it is actually yeah. the case. It definitely still exists, but yeah, it may not be as bad on past oh, oh, as well. Oh, oh, oh. And See, yeah. shit tons of mm -hmm. build-up because of two clean hits, too. Yeah. And mm. yeah, that that's something the yeah the hyper armor activation is actually that fast to where you're actually able to get it off and they can't roll away from doing a buffered um, vortex attempt there too. We definitely saw that and that was <laughs> actually surprisingly and the a really most good trade. Anticlimactic finish <laughs> yeah. of the tournament ever, dude. I know. I was second guessing myself, dude. I was like, should I put back on Blessed Dew here? Should uh, I stay on Red Feather? I should have just stayed on Red Feather and just. 
just focused on my play. Probably, but, yeah. Uh, it is, it yeah, is and he caught like me that. in my inventory at the end there. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, so it was even fucking inventory kill. Couldn't yeah, it be was, worse, dude. dude. Man. Yeah. Oh. I know. I know. Uh, so, hey, but congratulations yeah, on the second place. Very close games. And yeah, yeah, man. It was great. Absolutely. Dude, thanks. Thanks for having me on, dude. I really do appreciate it, dude. It's always a blast hanging out with the fan of aviation oh, dude. this is real <laughs> so <laughs> real <laughs>